Genesis chapter 1, verse 17. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven. He not only ordered that there they should be, and made them that there they might be, but he placed them there with his own hands, and they are placed, particularly the sun, at such a particular distance as to be beneficial and not hurtful. Had it been set nearer to the earth, its heat would have been intolerable, and had it been further off, it would have been of no use. In the one case, we should have been scorched with its heat, and in the other been frozen up for the want of it. The various expressions used seem to be designed on purpose to guard against and expose the vanity of the worship of the sun and moon, which be invisible and of such great influence and usefulness to the earth, were the first the heathens paid adoration to, and was as early as the times of Job, Job chapter 31, verse 26. And yet these were but creatures made by God, his servants, and agents under him, and therefore to worship them was to serve the creature besides the Creator. To give light upon the earth, this is repeated from Genesis 1.15 to show the end for which they were made and set up, and the use they were to be of to the earth, being hung up like so many lamps or chandeliers, to contain and send forth light unto the earth, to the inhabitants of it, that they may see to walk and work by, and do all the business of life, as well as be warmed and comforted thereby, and the earth made fertile, to bring forth its precious fruits, for the use of creatures in it, and it is marvelous that such light should be emanated from the sun, when it is at such a vast distance from the earth, and should reach it in so short a space. A modern astronomer observes that a bullet discharged from a cannon would be near 25 years before it could finish its journey from the sun to the earth, and yet the rays of light reach the earth in seven minutes and a half, and are said to pass ten millions of miles in a minute.